Hi, I'm Angie, also known as the Mandated Reporter. And today we're going to talk about the origins of Halloween. I do ask that you please pray for understanding, wisdom, and revelation before listening to this video. Father, I thank and praise you for the opportunity to share this information with others. I pray in the name of Jesus that eyes are open and ears and hearts are open and ready to receive the information. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher and our guide. I pray for the spirit of revelation. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that a thirst and hunger for righteousness and to study is started in though the hearers of this of this lesson this study lord i bless you and i thank you father god for being able to be your servant and i pray for the spirit of the berean to overcome us and help us to want to go and study further so that we can be in proper alignment with you and your laws statutes and commandments lord i bless you in the name of jesus amen i want to make a note this is not an exhaustive study it's just an overview I strongly encourage you to pray and ask Yah for his clarity and understanding as I've already stated and study this out for yourself. With Halloween fast approaching, it's literally like in a day or even hours while I'm recording this, I'm going to give you a little history on this holiday. Let's go through a few terms and definitions and then go into the actual history. The word holiday can be broken down in two words, holy and day. A holy day is a day that is hallowed. Hallowed is something that is consecrated or set apart. Holy or set apart is the word in Hebrew, kadosh. October 31st through November 1st is a moed. The word moed is an appointed time, day, season, or appointment. A feast day in Hebrew is the word chag. That's H2282 if you want to go and look that up. C-H-A-G, Chag. It means a festival, feast, festival gathering, festival of sacrificing, and solemn assembly. I really hope that you all go and do some further research of your own on this day for your own information. Proverbs 4, 7 tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. It is necessary that we know why we do the way we do the things we do. I initially started this study maybe about 13 years or so ago. But since then, a lot of information has been revealed because back then it wasn't a lot of information uh, about the topic. Um, I bless God um, for the information that's been revealed. So many people are now seeing that this is not something that a believer in the Most High should be commemorating. Uh, we have our own feast days that we should be commemorating and observing, and it's not this. Um, there is Still, however, a little bit of misinformation, um, and a lot of it comes from the church, believe it or not. So I'm asking you to allow the Holy Spirit of the Most High God to assist you in understanding and providing you with revelation on this subject. We must always remember that words 
foods, traditions, holidays, and feasts all have an origin. Please be mindful while listening not to say to yourself, that's not what it means to me. What you're doing now is you are allowing that strong man to be like the gatekeeper at the door of your heart and is stopping information from coming in and rechanging or transforming or renewing your mind. Don't allow, allow the enemy to stop the word of God from transforming you. You must know and understand that your feelings, my feelings, our feelings and experiences mean absolutely nothing if they do not align with Yah's holy word. Listen to this example. What if I said, F word, you, and after hearing this, you became offended. So then I told you, Oh, that's not how we use that word now. It's now an endearing term meaning, I love you. That probably would sound pretty outrageous most people and especially you because it is. I can't just take a word that is meant to profane and curse people and make it an endearing and encouraging term. Yet people have been doing this for many, many years now. The word etymology is a word that means word history. It has to do with the origin and root of a word. I like to say the root of the word explains the fruit of the word or the root explains the fruit. I heard a man of God say years ago that you cannot pluck all of the apples off of a tree, glue oranges on it, and then call it an orange tree. And I'd like to add that merely dressing your dog in a cow cast costume does not then make your dog a cow. Much of what is presented as historical information on this time of the year claims that it has its origins in Christianity. But I beg to differ on what I have discovered. Remember that the fruit explains the root. So Jesus told us you will know a tree by, by its fruit. Does this holiday bear the fruit of Christianity. I'm going to let you think about that. Again, 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 and I will continue to stress that you do your own research. If my daughters were listening and I asked the question, why should you do your own research, girls? They would most likely repeat because that's how cults get started if you don't do it yourself. I don't need to tell you how to understand, how to read, how to research. I merely put the facts out there, but it is up to you to go and do the research for yourself. Now let's begin. Halloween celebrations date as far back as 300 BC. A group of pagan priests called the Druids celebrated this holiday every year on October 31st. This day was the eve of the Celtic New Year in honor of their god Samhain, pronounced Samhain, like a female pig, like a sow. And it's pretty ironic that a sow is a female pig and is considered ceremonially unclean to Yah. I said that kind of funny, ceremonially unclean to Yah, but it is the original symbol of Halloween. 
something to think about. This day was also called the Harvest Festival, also known as the Festival of Death. Many churches call their alternative day of Halloween the Harvest Festival, but have no understanding that they are still celebrating death. The festival included bonfires, dancing, and sacrificial offerings of both animals and humans. Celtics believed that on this night, the invisible gate between the natural war world and the spirit world would open, allowing free movement between the two worlds. This is an excerpt taken from um, an author named Mary Fairchild. Even in our modern time, October 31st is known by Satanists, occultists, witches, and so on as their eve of the new year. It is also their high holy day. Why do we need to celebrate this day? Question mark. The history behind trick or treat. The Celts tried to appease the evil spirits, ghosts, goblins, and demons. Huge Samhain bonfires were built to light the way for all the spirits to find their way in the world of the living. They would leave out food, hoping that this would please the spirit world. I want you to wait for just a moment. Paul's right there. This is the same spirit behind the whole concept of milk and cookies to Santa. To Santa. It's making a covenant, building an altar, opening a door in the spirit for that altar, that transaction, the food offering. It's a peace offering to the spirits. It's giving them legal grounds to come in and operate in the lives of the people who are making the covenant with them. We should not eat foods sacrificed to idols. It's a covenant, like I said, to those spirits or with those spirits. You are opening the door to oppression. Read the story of Joshua 19. It explains the consequences of coming into covenant with the enemy. It's the story of, story of Joshua and the Gibeonites. Much of the candy for this time of the year or this season, this day, is prayed over and set apart by witches and warlocks. I provided a video by an ex-warlock named John Ramirez. He does a great um, job of, of describing what happens and why we should not as believers in the Most High God be observing this particular day. If in the house, in each of the houses, the, per the people in that house did not leave something for these um, Druid priests, um, then the spirits would play a trick or the, for the spirits also they leave something out for the spirits and the spirits would play a trick on that the living in that house the druids required human sacrifices they would go door to door asking for virgin daughters if this was not obtained at that chosen home then a hexagram the six-pointed star was painted on the door in blood to show the appointed evil spirits to cause all kinds of evil and fault to fall on that home in some cases even resulted in death or deaths the druids also supposedly wore costumes to hide their identities from those they cursed this is from um, a site called Ramella and 
it's um, the origins of Halloween. In Europe, where this tradition originated, each druid carried a turnip with him as he visited home. This turnip would have been hollowed out, used as a lantern, and carved into it a face of a demon. It was used as a magic charm to guide the druid from house to house. After this tradition migrated to America between the 8th and 9th centuries, and term- turnips weren't very prominent, there was, how- there was, however, an abundance of pumpkins. So the original name of the familiar spirit in- that inhabited the turnip was Jock. The spirit upon arriving to America was later named Jack, who lives in the lantern. Jack O'Lantern. There's a gentleman um, named Jim Staley who tells a story, a a more in-depth story, about how Jock came into the lantern. It's a a fable, Um, but still pretty interesting nonetheless um i'll provide his the link to his video bobbing for apples the celtics bob for apples as a form of divination apples were placed inside a large tub whoever was the first one to pull out an apple with his mouth without putting his teeth into the apple would have good luck all year round. This is a form of Baal or Baal worship. Then he would peel the apple and throw the peel over his shoulder superstition. Next, he would quickly look back at the peel and then behold a vision of a woman he would eventually marry. Divination. Romans honored the dead with a festival called Feralia. Please forgive me if I mispronounced that word in late October. It honored Pomona, their goddess of fruit trees, who was often pictured wearing a crown of apples. During this festival, they ran races and played games to honor the Apple Queen and used omens such as apple parings thrown over the shoulder or nuts burned in the fire in order to predict the future concerning their marital prospects. When the Romans conquered the Celts, they combined their local Samhain customs with their own pagan harvest festival. Bobbing for apples was derived from this blended pagan celebration. of the costume. The huge fires atop the sacred hilltops in which the Druids sacrificed animals and humans derived their name from the skeletons of those who died in them. The words bone and fire form the word bonfire. The orange flames lit up the black night, thus the official colors of Halloween. As pagan worshippers danced around and jumped through the fire, they wore disguises of animal head masks and animal skin costumes. The head of each household was given live embers to start a new fire on his hearth, which would last until the next fall. Free information. Autumn, A-U-T-U-M, is the name of an Egyptian god of the turn of the season. The death of the sun. Go look it up. It was believed this fire would protect their home from danger throughout the year. The Celtics believed that on October 31st, their God would call up the spirits of wicked people who had died over the past year. With the veil between the natural and spirit worlds pulled back, evil spirits would or could roam the countryside harassing people. So the Celtics lit bonfires and wore costumes to ward off evil spirits, demons, and ghosts. 
It is suggested that the tradition of dressing in long black robes with hoods, masking the face, or in all white sheets comes from the Celtic practice of dressing like the spirits of dead bodies or ghosts so as to placate them. This is an excerpt from an article called Halloween Costumes in the Celtic World by Bettina Arnold from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Why are orange and black the official colors of Halloween? I've already explained one reason orange is one of the official colors of Halloween and black. Night, the night sky, the orange flames, and black smoke. Next, the colors orange and black can also be traced back to the occult. They were connected to the commemorative masses or festivals for the dead, which were held in November. The unbleached beeswax candles used in the various ceremonies were orange. The ceremonial caskets were covered in black cloths. And let's not forget the modern day jack-o'-lantern. The pumpkins, they're orange too. The black cat. First of all, throughout history, cats are believed to be very spiritual animals. Out of all of the animals, it is believed that the cat can sense the presence of spirits, both good and bad. But the all-black cat holds a high significance to many witches and Satanists. The black cat, they believe, has special powers. To them, they may believe that black cats represent incarnated humans malevolent, malicious, spiteful, wicked, or nasty spirits, or the familiars, familiar spirits of witches. Wiccans and pagans hold what's called seances on October 31st. They consider, or still consider, Halloween to be a Sabbath, a, sabbat, a witch's Sabbath, to honor their ancestors before them. Many people today, especially in the black community, are honoring ancestors, which is a form of witchcraft. We must know this. They believe that since the gate, I'm talking about witches and warlocks and pagans now, not that was just a side note. They believe that since the gate between natural and spirit worlds are open on this night of October 31st, that it is the best time to conduct se seances. Now with all that said, do you know how these practices entered into the church? In short, it would be a spirit of compromise, but I will give you an explanation. When Constantine became the emperor of Rome, I said Constantine. Constantine <laughs> became the emperor of Rome. He made it law that everyone would become Christian, what we now know today as Catholicism, or die, become a Catholic or die. Because of this law, the church was flooded with unconverted pagans who refused to give up their own practices and ideas. Now, I'm not talking about the Protestant church. We're talking about the Catholic, the Catholic church, okay? Um, the church was quite unsuccessful at convincing the pagans to get rid of their practices. So they decided instead to sanctify them, the spirit of compromise. It is written, church, <laughs> it is written, we cannot make holy what is profane we cannot offer up to god what he has deemed abominable yah will not redeem that which is not his creation to begin with
The altar sanctifies the gift. The gift does not sanctify the altar. In other words, we cannot present profane or unclean things to Yah and try to make them holy. Another way to say it, we cannot sprinkle sugar on dung or poop and call it candy. My pastor said God is only obligated to pay for what he ordered. Did Yah instruct us to dress up in costumes and offer sacrifices to demons in form of food and candy? Remember the beginning of this video. Resist the urge to say, that's not what it means to me. Remember also, etymology, the origin of words. Everything has a root, and the fruit explains the root. Jeremiah 10 2. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Pope Gregory the Third moved All Saints' Day the church holy day <laughs> holiday set aside for honoring saints and martyrs who died to november 1st the mass held on all saints day was called hollow mass or all hollow mass so october 31st became as all hallows eve which later morphed into halloween <laughs> 